Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to build an AI or LLM agent completely from scratch using just Python, no frameworks and no outside coding platforms. AI agents are all the rage right now. They've already demonstrated incredible performance on some tasks like coding, and many are touting them as the future of AI and software. There are many frameworks, no-code solutions, and applications for developing or utilizing AI agents. The purpose of this video is to gain a deeper understanding of how these agents actually work. Whether you're developing your own agents, selecting another agent for your use case, or you're just interested. Understanding how agents work under the hood will take your AI knowledge and expertise to the next level. It'll remove the mystery out of AI agents, and it'll help you better assess what agents are good at and what type of tasks they're not well suited for. If you're interested in a deeper dive into AI agents and how they work from a theoretical perspective, then I highly recommend that you take a look at my previous video on the subject, AI agents are rising. I'll include a link in the description. AI agents are essentially large language models that are augmented in ways that allow them to interact with the outside world and solve complex problems that require planning and multiple steps. If we look at the standard unaugmented LLM, this is a linear process. The user provides a single input and the model provides a single text output. This LLM has no ability to interact with the outside world. It has no memory and any planning or plan execution that takes place has to happen in that single output. This is how the original ChatGPT worked but by adding tools, memory, and the ability to plan, this LLM becomes an AI agent and more capable of solving a wider range of more complex problems with far greater accuracy. Okay, let's start building our agent. I'm here in my VS Code terminal. I've already created a virtual environment and I've installed the Python packages that we're going to need. In this case, the main library that we're gonna need is just the OpenAI Python library. We're also gonna use .env and OS in order to handle the API keys. We're just gonna start with the standard unaugmented LLM. So I'll start here by creating a class called agent and I'll initialize it by using the OpenAI client and the my OpenAI API key. If you wanna copy this, you need to go create an account with OpenAI and get your own API key. And then I'm also going to provide this system message here, just really simple. You are a helpful assistant. So this is the prompt that the model uses throughout our interaction in order to guide its behavior and essentially direct it towards certain goals and objectives. And then I'm also going to add this method here, send message. This is just how we're going to send a message and retrieve a response from the model. Okay, so let's test this out. I'm going to initialize our agent. And then we're gonna start with this message asking just for a 50 word explanation of AI agents. I will send that message to our agent with the send message method, and then we'll print out the response. And we can see here now that we're getting this response from the LLM. Uh, and what this response is based on is just the static weights that were generated from the model when it was training. So this is not information that is current and it's certainly not information that is necessarily what I would consider to be a high quality response. Now I'm gonna change the message and we can just ask what is the most recent news regarding AI agents in 2025? And I'll save this and run it again. And now we're getting this response with the model telling us I'm unable to provide real time information as my training data only includes data up to October of 2023. So this is the issue. This unaugmented LLM has no ability to interact with the outside world. So it can't get new information. It can't relay or post information. It's completely limited to just producing a text response based on our prompt and whatever training data it has. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're gonna augment this LLM with tools. Tools are functions that we build to carry out some type of action. So over here in my tools.py module, I've already gone ahead and I've created two tools. So the first is this tool called web search. And all this does is it takes in a query as input, and then it uses the Tavili API in order to do an internet search and get a response. We can test this with the query, what is the current stock price of Microsoft? 
And we get this response from Tavili, which has information from various websites that come up from that query. So this tool will essentially allow us to access the internet. And then I have a second tool here called Calculator. It just takes in a text-based math expression and it converts that into an actual mathematical calculation. And the reason why we created this is because LLMs are notoriously bad at performing math themselves. So this provides the LLM with the tool of being able to provide accurate math calculations uh, when it needs to do so. Now, one of the things that's very important we can see here is that we have a very detailed doc string here for both of these functions. Um, and what this is going to do is this is going to tell the LLM what the function does, what it's used for, but also exactly what types of inputs that it takes. And by using this information, the LLM is going to be able to call one of these functions or tools in order to interact with the world. These tools will allow it to perform a web search or do a calculation, but really we can create any functions we want, accessing databases, posting things, or performing other types of actions in the real world. Okay, so how do we set up this LLM so that it can actually call these tools? I'm gonna go back to my agent here, and the first thing I'm going to do is import those tools, web search and calculator, into this module. Now we're gonna go down to the system message. So again, this is the prompt that essentially guides the behavior of the model through our entire interaction. Right now, we just have a very simple system prompt, you are a helpful assistant. But I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna import the prompt from a text file, systemprompt.txt. Let's go to our systemprompt.txt file. First thing we're gonna do is start this prompt or this instruction by telling it that its job is to break down problems into steps and solve them systematically. Next, we're gonna inform it that it has access to the tools that we created. We'll give it the information for tool number one, which is web search. And this is the doc string that we created, which explains what the function does and what argument it's expecting to take as inputs. We'll do the same for tool number two, which is our calculator. So now our agent knows that it needs to solve problems step by step and that it has access to tools in order to get information. Next, we have to give it a process for how it's gonna go about solving these problems. And that process is outlined here. So we're, we're informing it that it must use this format for its responses. We're gonna enter in a question. It's gonna produce a thought, which is what is the next step it needs to take in order to answer this question or solve this problem. And then if it needs one of the tools, it's gonna to call an action. So an action is just the model calling one of the tools. It'll provide the tool name, and then it will also provide the inputs required for that tool or function. And then here we have a pause. So what this means is that essentially we're stepping away from the LLM here. Once the LLM calls a function, it's essentially saying, I need to perform some action or I need more information in this case. But the LLM itself doesn't actually call the function. It's just informing us that that function needs to be called and it's giving us the inputs in order to call it. Other parts of our code will actually handle calling this function, getting that information, and then returning it back to the model in the form of an observation, the result of the action. This process will continue in a loop until the model determines that it's found the final answer, which it returns to the user. There's just one more thing we need to do before we can test this agent out, and that's handle the memory. So going back to our agent class, when I initialized the class, we created this empty list, and this is what's gonna be used to store the conversation. So we start by appending the system message, which is that initial prompt. And then every time we send a message, we append that message to this messages list. We submit that entire messages list to the API endpoint. We get the response, and then we append that response to the messages list. And what this does is this gives the model a continuous record of the conversation every time there's an interaction. So this is short-term memory for a chatbot. We could also extend on this. We could give it longer-term memory by giving it access to a database. But this is sufficient for our purposes because it allows the LLM to keep track of where it is in the process of solving the problem. So now that we have the memory set up, we can test this out. 
I'm going to open up my Python terminal. I'll import my agent class, and I'll import our two tools, web search and calculator. Then I will initialize an agent, and we can provide it with a task. I'm gonna ask it to find the sum of the current temperature in Paris and Berlin. This is a fairly trivial question, obviously, but what it does require is that the LLM have access to real-time current information and also that it's able to solve a problem that has multiple steps. So in this case, first it has to get the temperatures of each of the cities and then it has to perform a mathematical calculation. So we will send this to the agent through the send message method and we will save the response in the variable response and print that out. And we can see here it's following the framework that we provided before. We have the question that was submitted and then there is a thought. It's saying that I need to find the current temperatures of Paris and Berlin and then add them together to find the sum. So that's the plan. The first step is to search for the temperature of Paris. So then it's calling a tool with this action and the tool it's calling is our web search tool. And then it's providing this input, which is current temperature in Paris. So we're going to execute this tool manually with this query and save the result. I'm not gonna print this result out because there's gonna be a big blob of data, but presumably the information we're looking for is within that data. So now we can send that data back to the model, print out its second response. So it's saying now the current temperature in Paris is six degrees. Now it needs to search for the temperature in Berlin. And again, it's calling the tool web search uh, with the input current temperature in Berlin. We'll get that data. We'll send it back to the model. And now that it has the temperatures of the two cities, it's calling our calculator tool with the input six plus zero. We'll put this text into our calculator tool, provide this again to the model, and our response is that we have a final answer, which is that the sum of the temperatures in Paris and Berlin is six degrees Celsius. So this is just a very simple example of how an LLM can be augmented to approach more complicated multi-step problems where it's keeping track of where it is in the process of solving that problem. It can even potentially backtrack and change its approach to solving the problem. As I said before, this planning happens in a loop. It's a loop that continues until the problem is solved or until the problem is determined that the problem can't be solved. Now, in this example, I was actually manually being the loop by executing the tool functions and giving the data back to the LLM. But we want to actually automate this. So that's going to be the next step to finalize this agent. To add a loop to this and turn this into a real agent, we don't actually have to make any changes to this code in terms of how the agent works but we do need to add some additional code. The first thing is when the LLM calls a tool, it provides the name of that tool in text. So we need to be able to map the name of a tool to the actual function that will allow us to use that tool. And the way we're going to do that is with this known actions dictionary. So you can see that it has both of our tools here as keys to this dictionary, and then those map to the actual functions that we imported. So the next thing is that when the LLM returns a response, we need to know if it's returning an action, we need to know if it's calling one of the tools or if it's providing a final answer. So if we go back down here into our previous example, we can see that when the model calls one of the tools, part of the formatting is this heading action and then also action input. So we need to determine if the model's response has action and action input in it, and then actually extract the data so that we can use that to call the tools. And to do that, we can just use this extract action function. This takes the message string as an input and then just returns the action, which is the tool name and the action input or the tool parameter. If there is no action, it will just return none. So then finally, we have to be able to extract and if there is a final answer in the response from the model, then final answer will be included in the text. And for that, we can just use this function, extract answer, which takes the message as an input and then just extracts the final answer. So now we're ready to create the loop that actually makes this magic happen. 
And I'm going to do this with a function called agent query, and it's going to take an input, user input. All this is, is essentially the, the task that we're providing to the model, the problem that we want it to solve. So we'll start off by initializing the agent, and then we'll just create a while loop, while true. We'll get our initial response uh, by sending that user input to the model. Then we'll print the response out just so we can see it. And then we're going to use the function we created, extract action. We're gonna provide that response to this function so that we can get the action name and the action input. If the model calls a tool, then there will be an action and there will be an action input. And we can use those to invoke the function that the model is calling. Now, if there is not an action that's returned, then that means that the model has presumably come up with a final answer. And in that case, we can use our function extract answer and then return that. So this should be ready to go. There's one other thing, and that's usually it's good practice to have a maximum number of iterations just so this model can't go on thinking forever. Okay, perfect. So this should be ready to go. I'll save this. And we can just test this out in the Python console using the same task that we provided before. So we can see it's coming up with its plan. It's using the web search tool to get the temperature in Paris, then using this tool to get the temperature in Berlin. It's then calling the calculator tool to add these up. And then we're getting our final answer here at the end. I will note that it is using Fahrenheit this time instead of Celsius. But again, this is just a basic agent example. There are lots of ways that we can improve on this very quickly. What we saw is that with very little code, we were able to augment a standard LLM so that it was able to get access to data and solve multi-step problems that it wouldn't otherwise have been able to solve. Overall, I think that this crude agent did a very good job of coming up with its plan and then executing that plan step by step. That's all for this video. Now you know how to build an AI agent from scratch. And you can use this knowledge to go on and build your own agents better or to be able to evaluate agents for your own use cases. Agents are a pretty exciting topic and I'm looking forward to creating many more videos in the future on this. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.